mic goes on. Good morning, everyone. How are you today on this windy Sunday morning? I'm glad that you're joining us via Facebook Live today. We are broadcasting to you from our home. So I just want to let you know that you might hear a few dog barks and you might hear a few wind chimes blowing in the wind outside. But those noises are just separate from everything that we're trying to do this morning, which is worship our God. I want to start with some announcements that I have today. And then we have a special prelude to center us this morning. The first announcement is that if you are with us joining live on Facebook, please check in and let us know that you are here. And then we did have to make the decision to cancel our Monday Thursday activities that we had planned with Salem United Methodist Church and Community Church of Barrington for this year. We will probably still be under a shelter in place at that point, and so we thought it would be best to go ahead and cancel that, and we'll postpone it and do it next year. Good Friday services that we do at St. Paul have been moved to an online format. So on Good Friday night, we'll be going live on Facebook at 7 p.m. with our normal Good Friday services. And then I wanted to invite folks to join me again this Wednesday night for a prayer chapel on Zoom. I'll send you the link in an email this week. Last week, we had 21 people come into the Zoom room and have an opportunity to pray with one another and chat with one another, do some socializing together. So I invite you to come into that chat room and uh, pray with us and lift one another up this week. We do have the capacity to have 100 folks in there. So if you want to join us on Wednesday night, I would be really appreciative of that. And I also wanted to let the youth know that Wayne, who is our youth leader at church, will be doing a Zoom room for youth on Saturday morning, this coming Saturday morning, April 4th at 11 a.m. in the morning. So you'll get those details in the mail. Those are all the announcements that I have for this morning. So let's be what we're really about, and that is the worship of our God. We're going to start with centering our hearts this morning with a special prelude played by Renee Kruper. Good morning to my St. Paul family and friends. Hope all of you are doing well, staying safe, staying healthy. The piece I'm going to play for you today is titled Reverie. Reverie refers to a dreamlike state, kind of lost in your thoughts. And in music, it's an instrumental piece that tries to evoke that same type of feeling. It's peaceful, it's calming, and I hope you like it. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. If you're joining us live today on Facebook, you might want to go to our web page quickly at www.stpauluccbarrington.org and find the bulletin for today that we have posted there. You'll find a link to it directly under the opening video on the front page. But let us now that our hearts are centered, join together in the call to celebrate. Siblings in Christ, Although we may be finding ourselves off-center in the midst of these trying days, we remember that this is our time of Lent, a time we set aside to worship and pray, walking with Jesus and meditating on his great love for the world. These days call us to focus upon the Lord and his great sacrifice for us. These days call us to draw upon the strength the Lord brings. May we walk the Calvary road with the one in whom our strength depends. Our opening song this morning is called Lead Me to Calvary. It is a hymn that we use quite often at St. Paul. You'll hear a brief um, introduction in the song, and then you'll hear me begin singing it in the background. Let's sing together. It will be on your screen for you.
Would you all join me in a communal prayer of invocation? Holy One, in many ways we are not feeling strong in these Lenten days. Too much has changed, too much is frightening. Yet we also know that you are with us in each moment of our lives, strengthening us and giving us hope. We pray that your spirit will be among us as we gather for worship in our homes, stirring us to remember your great love for us and our love for you and one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. During our time of passing of the peace, I invite you to give yourself a hug and say peace be with you and to hug and the person that might be joining with you today to watch worship. But we will have a special clip of our passing of the peace at St. Paul that I think you might remember. Pay attention, you might see some faces of some folks that you know. You saw some faces there that you might recognize. Let's join together in our song of passing of the peace. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in need a big amen after that one. Let peace begin with each of us. We come now to our time of children's time and if the kids will gather around the family computer system that is helping us to bring worship this morning, I have a special Bible verse I want to share with you today. It comes from a really, really old book in the Bible, one of the oldest probably, called Deuteronomy and it is in the 31st chapter of Deuteronomy. This is what it says. Be strong and have strength of heart. Do not be afraid or shake with fear because of them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will be faithful to you. He will not leave you alone. What that means is, is that we can always count on God to be with us no matter what. Even when things have changed so much in our lives that we seem like we might be a little bit afraid because of those changes. So I have a special project I want to ask the kids to do for us. A special project that I think is going to help everybody in this world gather some strength. You may have seen as you've been out in your neighborhoods or perhaps maybe visiting over at grandma and grandpa's, you may have seen that there are some houses that have hearts in the windows. That's a project that's kind of going on nationwide right now um, to help people gain strength when they're feeling a little bit weak. And so I'm wondering if you kids would make some hearts and put them in your windows. We know that the symbol of the heart is one that means love but it is also one that means strength. I did that the other day and I have a bunch of hearts in our front window and I didn't have any construction paper so I used the paper that we have for scrapbooks and see I have this wonderful Disney paper here and if you don't know how to make a heart I'm going to show you really quickly. You take a big piece of paper like this and you fold it in half. Just fold it in half like that and then you have this line that's going to cause the paper to stay together and make two sides. Take your scissors, make sure you're using safety scissors. They decided that they wanted to give me safety scissors. 
Sorry, I'm having instructions from the, the, the pit crew back here. And you just cut out the shape of a heart on your paper. This is going to be a big heart that we're going to use in the window here. And when you're done cutting out the shape, what will happen is you will have a big heart like that. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to put your heart in a door window or in a window in your house so that when folks are out walking their dogs or taking a walk or jogging or running by, they'll see that heart and it will give them strength. They will know that the heart is the center of love and strength in this world and they will be able to gather some when they see your heart in the window. So here's another thing I'd like you to do. If you make some hearts and you put them in your windows, would you please text me a picture? Have your parents help you text a picture to me and I will put that on our Facebook page so you can see it on our Facebook page. Thank you so much for spreading love and strength in this world by sharing hearts with everyone that you can. Let's sing together our song for the kids. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every color, every race, all are blessed in Jesus' grace. Jesus loves the little children of the world. We have some special music for you now that is provided by Beverly Preuss. She has sung, Be Thou My Vision for us. Please enjoy. Oh, 
We come now to our time of prayer together and as we begin I'd like to lift up specifically the prayers that I've received this week that folks would like us to remember as we pray together. For Thanksgiving we have Thanksgivings for children in our midst, for those shopping services that are helping us to maintain our shelter in place orders so that we don't have to go out and for those who are willing to do that vital work in our world. For the way that people are reaching out by sending cards and calling one another on the phone, posting hearts in their windows. We pray for all of the essential workers that are out working even though most of us are in our homes right now. For strength and healing, we've received the prayer requests for Dr. Grant Raffel who is suffering from COVID-19 and of course for all of those who have been diagnosed with the disease. For Holly and Paige Minor, who are both sheltering at home with some sickness that is assumed to be COVID-19. For Mallory's aunt Ingrid, who's been diagnosed with cancer. For Greg, suffering with cancer. For Lynn Minton's friend, John. For those who are suffering with seasonal allergies, and unfortunately in this time, that has been kind of an exclusive way to make people feel like they are not welcome. And for Mary Lee, Barbara's friend, who is going to be having some surgery. We have to lift up this morning those who are mourning, and we're remembering those who have lost their lives to COVID-19 this week. We are remembering the family of Catherine Barry, who is a friend of Carol Collins and Larry Collins. She passed away this week. And we also are remembering the family of Paul Dunkley, a friend of several of us in the congregation from Mississippi. He passed away quite suddenly and unexpectedly yesterday. We're lifting up our seniors who are in healthcare facilities who are separated from their loved ones at this time. We're lifting up everyone in the states that have been experiencing the tornadoes and we pray that they are safe. And we're lifting up the 3,500 employees of Art Van Furniture who were uh, furloughed off of their jobs last week because of the shelter in place orders. So as we go into this time of prayer, I ask you to hold in your hearts an intention that you may not be able to verbalize to me right now, but you know it. Hold that in your hearts as we pray together. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we travel through these days of Lent, our worries have been many. Our routines, our touchstones, our lives have been changed in ways we could not have imagined. And we pray today for your strength as we continue to face this new reality. We pray to be led by your spirit into an ever deepening relationship with you so that we might be grounded upon the firm foundation of your love. Help us to use these unique days of sheltering in place to stretch our spirits and to grow more faithful in our trust of you. Help us to use these days and these moments to find new and creative ways to be community together. This morning we pray in thanksgiving for the children who are in our midst, for those who are essential workers going to work every day, for those who are doing our shopping services in this world and making it easier for us to have the things that we need in our homes. For all of the ways that people are reaching out in this world, calling, texting, sending cards, posting hearts in their windows, may those blessed reminders that we are community be lifted up in joy this day. We pray for strength and healing for everyone suffering from COVID-19. We pray for Dr. Grant Raffel, 
for Holly, Paige, for Ingrid, for Greg, for John, for Mary Lee, and for those suffering with seasonal allergies. May your healing hand be upon them, Lord. We pray for those who are mourning and missing their loved ones this day, Lord. We're especially thinking of the families of those who have lost uh, loved ones to the COVID-19 virus, the family of Catherine Berry, and the family of Paul Dunkley. We pray for those who are suffering with the trials of life, Lord, for the unfed, the unsheltered, those who are growing in their fear about things which are out of their control. We pray for those who are angry and seeking retaliation, for those who are harboring negative thoughts. We pray for those who are so fearful, Lord, they would not think of another before they think of themselves. We pray for our brothers and sisters this world over, Lord, who don't know what tomorrow will bring and are starting to despair. We're especially thinking this day, Lord, of our seniors in healthcare facilities who are separated from their loved ones at this time. We're praying for brothers and sisters in the states that have experienced tornadoes, and we ask, Lord, that if they have been harmed by those weather systems, that help will arrive and they will be back on the way to recovery soon. We pray for the 3,500 employees who lost their jobs at Art Van Furniture this past week due to the sheltering in place orders. Lord, we pray for our leaders of this world and of our nation this day. We ask especially that the leaders of our nation would set aside their agendas for power and listen to you calling them in the way that can help in this world. Enlighten their path, Lord, and show them how they can bring about the best care and the best peace for all of us. And help us, Lord, always to be peacemakers wherever we go. Lord, there are intentions in our hearts that we can't lift up verbally today, so we spend these next few moments in silence with you. Lord, remind us that each of us is your child and that our strength can only be found in you. Help us to be more like Jesus, living with love in our hearts and compassion in our actions, showing our hearts of strength to this world, Lord, as beacons of hope. Hear us now as we pray his words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. This morning, Lynn Minton will be bringing us our scriptures. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. The first reading comes from the Hebrew scriptures, Isaiah 41 verses 1 through 10. Listen to the word of the Lord. Listen to me in silence, O coastlands. Let the people renew their strength. Let them approach. Let them speak. Let us together draw near for judgment. Who has roused a victor from the east, summoned him to his service? He delivers up nations to him and tramples kings underfoot. He makes them like dust with his sword, like driven stubble with his bow. He pursues them and passes on safely, scarcely touching the path with his feet. Who has performed and done this, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am first and will be last. The coastlands have seen and are afraid. The ends of the earth tremble. They have drawn near and come. Each one helps the other saying to one another, take courage. The artisan encourages the goldsmith 
and the one who smooths with the hammer encourages the one who strikes the anvil. Saying of the soldering, it is good. And they fasten it with nails so that it cannot be moved. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you, whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant, I have chosen you and not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Would you all pray with me for just a moment, please? Holy One, we are thankful for this word that comes from the great prophet Isaiah to remind us that you are the first and the last, and it is you who is our stronghold in this world. I pray that as we go into this time of learning together that your Holy Spirit would move among us, connecting us deeply and reminding us that your word is given to us for transformation. Lord, I pray that I would get out of the way and simply be the vessel through which you speak this day. Let it be your word that is heard here. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds would be acceptable to you who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I admit that I had a meltdown this week. Just, just a little one, but not, not too big, but it was a meltdown. I uh, discovered in my planning process for today, um, this week, that all of a sudden I couldn't fulfill the big plans that I had for our sermon series for Lent this year about becoming strong vessels for God. You see, today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and my plan was that the video that you would see today would be me walking into the place where I take my pottery classes, walking back to the kiln, and you would see me putting a vessel into the kiln so that I could talk to you about how once you create a vessel, it has to go into the kiln to make it strong. And I realized that the shop is closed and I couldn't do that. So I had a mini little meltdown about how is it that I could bring that message to you? That there is a time when God uses all of the trials, all of the heat that is around us to make us stronger rather than keeping us weak. So I thought, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to pray. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to do on Sunday morning when it comes time to show that lesson. So we don't have a video today because I'm gonna do it right here in front of the camera with you. Here's how I've decided that we can learn this. This is a vessel that I have created. Now this vessel is becoming what we call um, bone dry. It's drying out so that it can go into the kiln, but it has not yet been what we call fired. So that means that essentially it's very weak. It's a very weak vessel. If I were to put this in water in a few hours, it would completely dissolve even though it's so hard. But the reality is, is that it is so weak that I can actually break it. I can break this vessel because it's not strong in any way, shape, or form. Just because it's formed, just because it's uh, taken shape and been trimmed, it's been opened, it's been centered, doesn't mean that it is a strong vessel. I can break it into a million little pieces if I want to. I might fire that when I can get back to the kiln because that's kind of like a little egg and I could maybe put a little beanie baby chick in there and have it be something on the shelf. You see, without those trials around us, we're weak. Trials, it seems, are the things that have the transformative power to make us be strong in this world. Now, this is a piece that has been fired. This piece I made many years ago. It's a little votive that you put in there. This piece has been fired, and you can tell because the color is different, but also because no matter how hard I try, I can't break this vessel unless I were to slam it on the ground with such grace and force that it would break apart. I can't break it with my hands. It's tough. It's strong. 
the fire around it up to over, I believe, 2,000 degrees, the fire around it has made it a strong vessel, made it be so that it can do its job in this world. Unlike this, this vessel has the power to do exactly what it was supposed to do. This vessel can't be melted with water. This vessel is strong and will hold and do what it's supposed to do. You know, I know that there are days that we feel very, very weak. I admit that I do not feel the strongest in the world right now in the midst of all of these different things that are going on around us. I admit that I have noticed that my strength of spirit is not what I would want it to be right now. I'm more like this kind of clay, this unfired, this untransformed clay. I have points where I just want to stop and I just want to melt. I have points where I feel like I'm breaking right now in the midst of everything that's going on. So I searched the scriptures this week to find out what is it in there that I can read that will transform me and help me to feel like the walls of my vessel are hardening up and strengthening so that I can be who God wants me to be? And I remembered this story from Isaiah. This particular part of Isaiah, no one hears this in churches on a regular basis because it's not in what we call the lectionary. This is one of those parts where they either thought that it was too difficult to preach on or it was just something that was irrelevant and they didn't think it was good to the whole years of stories that we want to put together. But I remembered this one because it comes from a part of the book of Isaiah that I am particularly fond of, chapters 40 through 66, which is the chapters that are written by what we call Second Isaiah. And this is the part where the people have been put into exile. They have not listened to God. They have not turned to God for their strength. They have turned only to themselves to be strengthened. And they found out that that fails them. And they end up in exile in Babylon. In the midst of that exile, we know that many become weaker and weaker. But there is a faithful remnant that becomes stronger and stronger. And that faithful remnant, generations later, will go back to Jerusalem and they will rebuild exactly the temple and the society in Jerusalem that was taken away from them. The faithful remnant are the ones that represent for us the strong vessels that are transformed because of all of the troubles around them. That's kind of a message for us today, isn't it? That all of this stuff that's going on around us, all of this stuff we're trying to get used to in our lives that seems so strange and seems so out of character for all of us, has the potential to either make us weaker or to make us stronger. And I, for one, want to remember what the prophet Isaiah says, that God is the first and God is the last, and it is God who has been making us strong Every single solitary time there is a trial around us. Every time we feel like we are in the fire, if we turn and depend upon God's strength, we will walk out of that trial more transformed and stronger than we were when we went into the trial. I was listening the other day to some folks on the television and they were talking about how what we're experiencing right now with sheltering in place and the COVID-19 virus that is frightening us all is akin to what happened in 9-11. And they were talking about how in 9-11 there was a very short period of time when we became stronger together but then all of a sudden our fear got the best of us and we began to see behaviors that we don't like. Behaviors like suspicion, behaviors like mistrust, behaviors like hate growing in our world. All of those things that weaken us as a community. And then they talked about how the stock market crash in 2008 gave us a short period of pulling together, but then the fear took over and again we saw the rise of mistrust and suspicion and hate. They were wondering if this crisis that we're going through together as a nation is something that will help us pull together in a permanent way or whether or not in a few weeks we'll begin to see the rise of suspicion and hate and mistrust again. I have to admit that I'm a little bit pessimistic about it 
because I think that we've been seeing the weak behaviors around us the entire time. We're seeing folks that are so worried about themselves that they would hoard items that people really are in need of right now. We're seeing people that are becoming bickering and angry with one another. We're watching our politicians online bicker and argue with one another about the best course of action. And we are just standing here. What if we all stood here and realized we are in the midst of the fire and in this fire God is strengthening us, making us strong so we can be the vessels we are supposed to be in this world. The vessels that are strong enough to carry God's love, the vessels who are strong enough to say, no, I won't give in to fear. The vessels who are strong enough to say, hate is not having a home here. We are a home of peace in the midst of this the vessels that are strong enough to stay holding tight with one another in the midst of this and remembering that our job is to help others always. What if we change this time? What if this is the trial that will cause us to be so transformed we will be a different society on the other side of this crisis? I don't know if that will happen, but that is the prayer that I have. I pray that we will be the faithful remnant who will stand up together and start to rebuild this world as the kingdom of God as it should be when this crisis has passed. And that is our hope today, that this crisis will pass. And our job, our question is, when it does, will we be stronger or will we be weaker? Will we be able to be so broken so quickly that we would dissolve almost instantaneously? Or will we be so strong that nothing can break us as the people of God in this world? My tough question for you today is, where are you feeling like you need to be strengthened? Where is that place inside of you where you need to turn it over to God and allow God to form it and mold it and strengthen you into the vessel that God has called you to be? Where are the ways where your strength in this world could make us be the kingdom of God? Where is your strength today? I hope that all of us can draw down deeply into the strength of God as we continue to go through a time that is unprecedented and unforeseen and scary. But I do know this. I do know that our word of hope today comes from the fact that God is our first, God is our last, and it is God who has been providing all of the strength that we need from the time God began the world until the time that we will pass into the full kingdom of God on this world. Go out and find ways, may they be creative and unique, to share your strength in this world so that others might see that strength and gain a little bit of strength for themselves. Be a strong vessel this week. Amen. We come now to a time when I want to lift up to you my thanks and my gratitude for all of the ways that you're continuing to support St. Paul United Church of Christ financially. It is so overwhelming and it is so um, humbling to me to know that we are having uh, folks still continue to send checks in the mail to us, send uh, financial support during this time. And that support that you are sending right now not only helps in these moments that we're going through, but that is the faith statements that we have about how our church is going to continue to be the strong vessel for God in this world. So I'd like you to join me, if you can, in the doxology, and then we will uh, pray our communal prayer of dedication of the offerings together for all of these offerings that have come in this week. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise God the Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Would you join me in the communal prayer of dedication? 
Gracious one, we thank you for the many blessings that you so generously provide. We return to you a portion of those blessings given from the love we have for you and our desire to help you create a realm of peace and love in this world. Touch our hearts, Lord, and help us to grow in generosity each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing song this morning is called Day by Day. It's not exactly the day by day that you think it is. It's a song about being strong in God. And so like our first hymn, you'll hear a bit of introduction and then you'll hear me begin singing. I pray that you'll join in the singing together. thank Renee for providing the audio tracks of the piano today for our songs. I want to thank Steve and Kat for being our tech people behind the screens. We'll all wave at them behind the screens. And I want to thank you for joining today on our online worship. It means the world to me that you are continuing to find ways to be community together and joining your hearts in worship with one another and with God this day as we bring about a unique and creative different kind of worship than we ever thought we would ever do. I appreciate all of your support as we're going through this time. What I want to remind you of today is this. Keep checking your uh, Facebook posts, keep checking your email, watch us on Twitter, watch us on Instagram for messages that we're trying to get out to one another. Join us in the prayer chapel on Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday night. I'll send the link in your email this week. Reach out to one another through cards and calls and texts and Facebook messages this week to stay in community with one another. But here's what I really want you to leave today with. I know that there are times right now when we're feeling especially weak. 
but I want you to remember that every time you have felt weak, God has given you the strength to become a stronger vessel in this world. God has touched your life with the strength that only God can give. And you have gotten through that trial and you have come out on the other side of it, a transformed vessel. Let's be people who allow this crisis we're in right now to transform us into the kingdom of God. Go in peace this day and do it in the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.